Welcome back to the Sound for More channel. It's Leo speaking. Today I have the pleasure to show you High Life from Disco DSP. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. Okay, so what is High Life from Disco DSP? It's a performance sampler. It's a sampler which has a sample or wave editor built in. It has five effects, different flexible modulation routes, morphobo scheme, etc. etc. It uses 32 bit point, um, sorry, 32 bit floating point um, for uh, working with wave tables. It, it has the option to work with 128 programs, and for each program, you can add zones which contain samples, and you can have an unlimited number of zones, which is really great. You can see you have a filter section here, you have uh, an ADSR. Um, there as well, uh, you have modulation uh, LFO, and you can also apply a modulation envelope as well, which um, which is really nice. Okay, a lot of different options. You also have the ability to do morphing, which um, you can define different state. So if you click on uh, option and you select morph edit, for which also there is a shortcut, you can actually change the position having two different states, and then you can morph between the two of them. But I will show you that in a moment. Under option, you can see also different type of engines. So the first one is for real time. Remember, the last two are sync modes, which are not really suitable for real time, but bounce to audio is preferred. Okay, I'll leave it to real time for now. The other thing as well, you can create new programs in your bank, but you can import samples and you can import sound phones but you can export WAV files and you can export sound fonts. And that is great, particularly if you want to import sound fonts in other applications. There are a lot of applications, for example, in the iPad, which uh, the, which uses um, sound fonts, but don't, don't have the ability to actually uh, create them. So this is really good. The other thing that you can do, you can uh, use different um, uh, format of sample, so he accepts a WAV file, MP3, OGG, RAW, FLC, etc., etc. I should also say that up here uh, you have a, a um, menu on the top left hand side, and the main option there is audio MIDI settings. When you select it, you have these uh, option here, which comes from the system, where, which you can use, of course, to connect to, to your external MIDI controller. As you can see, I have an MPK Mini 3, but of course, you can use also a Bluetooth MIDI controller. Okay, so let's start uh, selecting new program. It will ask me, do you want to create a new program? And I will say yes. Okay, so how do I load a sample onto a zone? Well, it's very simple. Um, I click on a sample, like this piano note, click and drag and drop here. As you can see, it has used the uh, name of the sample for uh, the bank and also for the first zone, which is here. Okay. At this point, actually, all the controls are actually working. You can see you have a display here what the controls do. Now, if I press um, a, a note, a, a key on uh, the external MIDI controller, is playing that note, that sample which is spread around the keyboard. Now let me uh, do a quick change. I, let, I go to edit, then I, then I go to amp as an edit, and then I select normalize. So immediately I have normalized that uh, sample. It's probably not the best sample because it has a little bit of um, um, the, the sample note is not completely clean, but that will do for now. So you can adjust the master volume. The pitch band range, of course, that you are going to uh, to use. Okay, so you can define that. You can also set a portamento or a glide when you move from one note to the other. And now, if you have it in auto mode as well, what will happen is it will use portamento only when the notes overlap. Okay, so that's something to actually remember because it's not uh, um, obvious. You have three ways of playing notes. Poly, of course, allows you to play multiple notes. Mono, of course, one note at a time, so the next note will discontinue the previous note. And legato, and in legato mode, it's still monophonic, but what it doesn't do, it doesn't restart the envelope, so it gives you a better feeling for, uh, for a legato. Now, 
you have a cutoff here for a cutoff frequency on the filter. You need to choose, of course, the filter that you want to use. Let's remove the glide. You can change the resonance. And then, of course, you have option to actually filter be applied through the keyboard based on the note position here, which you can set, and also the filter applied through the keyboard based on the velocity here. You have a lot of different filters here which you can choose. You have a, a, notch, um, a notch filter here. You have a button pass um, filter, low pass filter, high pass filter. So a lot of different options, really nice. At the top here, you have um, your typical ADSR, right? You can adjust your attack. How long it takes to decay. For example, if I set the sustain down to zero, you can increase the decay. Takes longer or shorter. Choose short, right? But it really depends what you are after. The release. And of course, the amount that you can adjust, the overall amount of the envelope. Here you can decide to adjust the overall volume of the instrument related to MIDI velocity, of course. And the second one, you can adjust the overall morphine of the program related to MIDI velocity as well. You have a modulation um, LFO here which um, is uh, uh, really nice. You can adjust the phase here, starting phase, the rate, and of course you can sync it if you run it inside a DO, for example, and then you can have destination for your amplitude, your cutoff, uh, your resonance in terms of filters, and of course the pitch as well. So, cutoff. <laughs> Really nice. Of course, you can see the changes up here. And of course, you have also modulation envelope for which you can uh, control uh, your ADSR here. And then, of course, you have uh, an envelope to cut off amount. So the envelope amount option will control the amount of filter of the filter envelope. And then you can do the same on pitch as well. So it's your destination practically for your modulation envelope, right? So you can say, oh, let's attach it to pitch. Let's make the attack longer. So you can hear is moving up um, slower, okay? And let's reset this down to zero. Okay, nice. So. Let's look at the effects now. You can apply three different effects, chorus, delay, and uh, reverb. Let's start with chorus. Can adjust the delay, the feedback, the rate, and depth of modulation, so your LFO amount. You can apply delay, so let's turn this off. You can adjust the time, the feedback, um, of course, and uh, then you can also do cross delay and you can also sync it. You have uh, then reverb, which is really nice. Let's turn this off. You can adjust the size of the room. You can adjust the, the width um, and you can adjust also the um, the absolute really um, reverberation uh, energy, so that dumplings. Okay, well, let's turn this off. Here you can uh, uh, define, um, turn on that special daft sound effect. Click here. And you can set it. And then here you can enable Rock the Disco, which is an instant sound puncher and pumper. Okay, really nice. Now so let's disable both of them. Okay, let's go to edit mode. Okay, here again, you can still see your piano note there for the bank, and here you can see there is only one zone, but you could have multiple zone and, uh, zones, and uh, I will show you that later. Here you can change the name, okay, really nice, the channel. You have the rate information, the size information, the file name, of course, which you can change as well. And um, uh, so let's click on Don't Allow for now. You can set the loop forward, the bidirectional backward, and forward sustain. You can set the start and the end, of course. You can change the gain and the pan. You can adjust it by semitone or sense, and then you can define of how the pitch changes between 
nodes in sense and then you can define the groups and decide how they behave in terms of being exclusive and then also the uh, trigger which can be on attack on release okay you can define the root and then the sync and then you can define two different ranges on which the uh, sample will respond to this range of keys or this velocity. So if I increase this and I play lowly, it will not play nothing, anything at the moment. If I slow this down, lower this down, it will start to allow lower velocity to come through. And the same here on key. Okay. So here you can zoom in, zoom out. You can also click and say full zoom. You can go on edit, select everything. When you select everything, you can cut, copy and trim. Then you can say select nothing. You can say, okay, I'm here. I select all of these and then click edit, select trim and we'll remove this part here. I will keep what is selected, okay? Effect, you can reverse it. And of course it takes a little bit of time. And this is where, for example, I reverse it again. You would say, okay, not great. So let's go up to here, for example, select trim, and you will keep only that part. And then, of course, if you were to, uh, sorry, reverse it, it will be quicker because he has less um, empty space. You can also rectify it as well, okay, like so. You can also uh, apply distortion, to type of distortion. Amplitude, you can do fade in, fade out, okay? You can normalize it and you can remove a direct current as well, which helps with uh, interference on the sound. Um, yeah, you can do also fade out. You can see it's fading out better and you can do fade in as well. It will change the, like so. Um, let me um, load these again, replace the current sample, yes, okay. Now let's go to amplitude and normalize this again. Q, this is really nice. So let's say that I add a Q there, then I click here and I add another Q there, then I click here and I add another Q here. Now it says zero, one, two. If I press a C key, it will start to play from this Q, C sharp, it will start to play from this cue. D, it will start to play from this cue. Really nice, doesn't it? Particularly if you have an audio loop, uh, um, so you can section uh, the sample in different cues and you can play through the keyboards in different parts of that loop. Really nice. You can remove all the cues and you can also add cues from sync as well, which is really useful. Of course, you can still move them around. And then you can set the a loop. So for example, you can say from there, and you can say loop, set the loop start to here. Then you can say set the loop end, and then click and play on the keyboard. Really nice. Here you have pitch bend, modulation controls. Okay, now let me go back to the file. Uh, let's click edit to exit that. Let's go back to the file. Let's create a new program. Now, let me show you what happens when I select multiple files and I drag and drop them. Okay, so um, what happens is that, um, here we go, you have uh, this message which will ask you to um, use auto drum machine and you have um, the option to say yes or no, click OK. And what it does, it actually load these free samples automatically and they're spread around. So if I go to edit, you find that the first uh, one here is key C5 to C5, the second one C sharp 5 to C sharp 5, and so on, the third one from D5 to V5. So as you press different keys on the keyboard, you, press, you actually have different uh, uh, samples being uh, triggered. Now let me also show you that you can overlap them. So again, let's create a new um, program and um, let's select um, a drum loop and uh, also a piano note and let's uh, load them up um, again. And it will say again, do you want to uh, use auto drum machine spread? Say, okay. Right, so C5, I have this kick drum, of course, let's go to edit mode, 
let's select normalize on that and then the uh, second one also we're going to say normalize as well okay um yep so you can see uh, the uh, um, program number one and you have two samples right first one which is effectively the loop that is why you heard that kick sound at the beginning as i mentioned you need to hold and then you go to the second one now if i was to change for example the lower part um here and the upper part there you left them now playing together which uh, is really nice really interesting isn't it okay let's uh, create a new program again and uh, let's load just uh, a piano note like um so and then let's uh, uh, normalize it uh, again now let's go for to that cutoff and let's select the low pass filter let's go to options and select morph edit now change this like so and let's exit morph edit now if i move the modulation wheel as a play note so i'm morphing now between these different states which is really nice and you can use that in other parameters okay i'm going to stop here i hope you enjoyed the uh, video and as always see you next time bye